That's right. I have wrestled with an alligator. I don't tussle with a whale. I don't handcuff lightning, throw thunder in jail. You can't stop me. I'm going to win. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. I won't quit. I just keep getting stronger. 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 Hey everybody, welcome to, we're calling this Steve and Lift number two. It, it was a super successful smash hit number one when Jeff and I decided to do it. But with with our, our YouTube page and our podcast channel, we just need to do, like, well, essentially we just do what we want to do. Is that kind of what, what it yeah, is, Jeff? Yeah, that's the, that's the main gist of it. Yeah, and, and what we like to do is talk about lifting, but weirdly enough, and we brought Luke on. Luke, how do you see your last name? Sokol. Sokol? 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 Sokol, yeah. Sokol, okay. What is that? Uh, Polish. Polish, sweet. I should have known that. You look... The the running joke with Luke is that he looks like... Yeah, he looks like the Russian from um, um, Rocky 3. I'm Drago. Don't don't ever call me Drago again. He's the biggest loser on international television, so thank you. This is so true. But yeah, so long story short is we we bring people on that we think will be funny, and we'll talk about lifting and lifting shit. And Luke has a pretty good story too, but we're also going to talk about memes because, I don't know, Jeb and I just send them to each other, and we think it's hilarious. (laughs) So, it's, so all our meme pages are private, so you can't. We can't even share them because no one. Yeah, we can't them. share. We can't share half of them. Um, we'll be completely upfront about that. Um, if you know, well, yeah, memes, there's a lot of them. We just there's a lot we, of we dark memes, and so we're picking the safe ones. But Luke, how's it going? Going good, man. Can't complain. So give us a little background. I know. I know. I'll make a few jokes. You, but you're allowed to make jokes too, because you basically do anyways. Like you're pretty much the well, not the only one, but one of the most consistent people to beat me <laughs> on Instagram. Right, right. If I post anything, you'll let me I know. Talk a lot of shit. Yeah. Um. And this is actually you know, this that. is actually I'm gonna cut you off because I I've learned that this is your first podcast. Well, well, I've like, done this thing with. Uh, Okay, so yeah, first official podcast. Yeah, because Pat's is on like, does any that's on his like account, like his what do you call it that account? Uh, Patreon. Patreon. That does not. That doesn't count. That's bullshit. Right. That's like that's like a pet project they do to make lots of money. It's, it's like a money cast. Sure. <laughs> so, first official podcast, I guess. Yeah. We're the first. Um, you asked you asked my about my background. I'm from a small town on Long Island called Hampton Bays. Went to high school there. I was the absolute shit in high school. I was the man, okay? Don't want anybody to tell you otherwise. I played, uh, I played football, wrestling, lacrosse, college, just football. Did some jujitsu after. Professionally, I went to Springfield College. Worked at a place on Cape Cod called APT. Worked at a place in Connecticut, ran phone training. Worked in Manhattan. Worked not intern yeah. for the Florida Panthers NHL organization. Dean usually has something to say about that. Well, uh, how'd you get that internship? On... What's up? How'd you get that internship? So there's a job. <laughs> okay, I got paid for it. Not an internship. Um, and now I'm back in New York as a private trainer uh, servicing the good people of New York City. That was a great intro. I, you know you did, though? Like so that, that is actually really good. There's been a few people we've had that had like their first intros and they were like so bad. So you obviously been practicing, but <laughs> hey, actually I'm going to interject real quick. You're on your phone, right? Luke? Yeah. Turn it sideways. You don't look like a fucking noob. Oh, it's not going to work. Yeah, go back. Oh, it's not going to work. You wait, yeah, go back. Too You're, long. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Now it's just a space. <laughs> Here, I'll actually like the there we go that. now you're full screen look at that are we good now that, yeah. now you look professional you, you know yeah, that's, I'm the man. I was telling you, guys. you know that scene from Eminem or um from La- uh, last mile like you ever watched last mile when he's like eight eight mile? at the end yeah la- you've never seen last mile eight mile eight, eight mile. mile fuck yeah I'm an idiot Jesus well this is like ruining right? my joke setup but you know that last scene where they he like basically out he's like I'm white and I live with my mom and stuff that was you you're like you're like, listen, I'm not an intern because like you're basically taking all my jokes out before I could say them because the one joke, smart, I, right. yeah. So that was smart. 
Um, but also, I don't know if- so like I, I'm usually on the 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 cast with like a bunch of Canadians, so I don't ever understand what the fuck they're talking about. But I'm just gonna explain to you, Dean, when he said like he was the fucking man in college, that's the most Long Island like statement anyone could ever make. Like Long Long Island is a special place in the pantheon of of uh, American culture. Mm-hmm. When you say you're the man, that's just like normal. Everyone's the man there. Right, right. It's, yeah. it's strong unless island. someone else asks. Like yeah. you're from a Long Island, and then you're both the man, and then it's just kind of like a secret. You yeah. you rise to the apex. <laughs> <laughs> so Springfield College, okay. It, Explain this for the people who aren't listening, because like there, there's like I don't know, I, I don't want to say this underground strength universe, and but basically you say Springfield, and everyone's like, "Damn, the, that guy's a fucking man." <laughs> but ex- explain this for everyone, because that that's a big thing when you say that. Right. So, um, there exists a land, okay, in a faraway place in the middle of Massachusetts, where. Right in the ghetto, they decided to put, well, the ghetto kind of formed around it. Springfield College, kind of the mecca of strength and conditioning. Now, around the 50s and 60s, there was a fatigue lab in Harvard, okay? They had, like, their own exercise science department where they did exhaustive testing, where they studied physiology. And then one of Pavlov's apostles came over to Springfield College. Now, this dude was legit, started running all these tests, all, putting out all these physiology papers, right? And now students started signing up for Springfield over Harvard. What? So from the get, from the get, Springfield's physiology department was legit, like straight from the Russian domain, man. Like that sort of shit. Um, so steroids. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no. You said it. You said it. You said Russian domain. At that yeah. point in time, that was for the infancy. Of That's D ball. Yeah, just lots of. Anyways, D-ball. we'll let you tell you. So, story. so going on. Spring, so Springfield started pulling all the students from Harvard. Springfield's exercise science department put the Harvard fatigue lab out of business. Yeah. And since then, it's kind of been this rumbling and tumbling exercise science powerhouse that's just been churning out coach after coach after coach, whether it be strength coach, whether it be, it's like this, uh, what is it? Um, it's like this home of coaches. There's a cradle of coaches, right? Like people call Ball State a cradle of coaches, but like in the NFL, there's never a week where two strength and conditioning coaches or two coaches in general aren't across the field from each other. Like there's a Springfield guy and it's a tight knit circle in almost every single department in pro sports. It's like, it's crazy how deep it runs, how far it goes. And they, they're really like, they're really everywhere. Those Springfield guys. There's yeah. also a huge, a huge cohort in uh, publishing as well. A lot, most yeah. of the guys I've worked with that I've written for magazines came from Springfield. Right. Right. And it's, it's like, nuts. it's like a standard, that you, you know, you try to pick good people and, and you get the results. So went to Springfield, uh, Played football there. So fresh out of college, I was blessed enough to have four years in a college uh, strength and conditioning setting. Kind of sets you up. Like, e- even if, like, even if you don't know shit about strength and conditioning, yeah. if you spend four years in a college weight room with good strength coaches, which, like, Springfield's known for, like, you can go out and do sports performance almost immediately. You yeah. know, like, you can, like, monetize that. Shit, I'm sure, like, some of the communication majors at Springfield – somehow monetized training you know well and the the one cool thing the and maybe that's a personality thing but i think it would probably be just being in that environment when i met you that one of the first things i don't i don't even know if this is the right question but i think you did when you went to hype you essentially just like drove across and we're just like i need i'm gonna work for you guys like can you tell that story because i think that one's it's one of those stories where, like, there's all these people who, like, I can't get a job or I can't get clients and all this shit, but they're not willing to, like, do shit about it. And, like, it's, it, it, was, it was interesting the way you did it. Buddy, anyway. that's, that's so a character issue, but we'll get into that later on. So <laughs> the story goes, I, I was working at a place with a buddy from college called APT. Now, it's a small place on Cape Cod that's adjacent to a hockey rink. And 
they just do sports performance. They got a lot of Ivy League guys, a lot of pro guys that come in, so it's good exposure. But the summer was wrapping up. There was – not that there wasn't much work, but you could tell that the winter on Cape Cod isn't really like a – it's not like a hustle and bustle area. And, like, I wanted exposure. Yeah. So I drove home to Long Island. Now, the drive from Long Island to Hype, it's probably like an hour 20, right? So I would, I would drive into Brooklyn, park my car in a sketchy neighborhood, take the subway over, and then go to Hype. So I show up one day, and I just like kind of walk up the pad. I'm like, hey, like, I went to Springfield College. Like, I was wondering if, like, you guys needed an intern. Yeah. Right? Like, they didn't, they didn't send an email or anything. I just kind of showed up, and I'm like, hey, can I stay? And they're like, um, yeah, sure. Like, this is kind of weird. We didn't really ask for an intern, but fuck, I guess we got one. Um, so I just showed up. And, like, I didn't have anything better to do. I could have tried to, like, hustle in the Hamptons. But, again, the summer was, like – so my hometown is right next to the Hamptons, right? It's, like, home to all the blue-collar people that service the Hamptons. But during the winter in the Hamptons, it's a ghost town. There's nobody yeah. there. Because all the Hamptons people go into the city. So, like, I just wanted reps shit tons of reps i'm like okay where can i go it's like this crazy dude pat from college is in hype gym i'm just gonna show up to hype gym as often as possible and just kind of like stand around for a while and it took about like three days before like i got my first like session with people they needed um they need somebody to like run a semi-private class i was like bro me like i got the man you. From the island. like i'm literally the man like you, you, there's nobody better for the job i'm at the top i'm already at the top so um they just gave so it I, I, apparently, apparently i did a good job there you know yeah. ran people through and and from there it was just kind of like a slow build and they're like hey like we'll start paying you i'm like fuck this is great <laughs> you know what fuck that is though like you know, like weirdly enough like how old are you 25 25 i'm gonna seem old because i'm like 32 but i'm like the newer generation but like they don't do shit like that like that seems like that's that's literally a story that like doesn't happen anymore which makes no sense but like you you didn't well i think i think it's an allegory to this so i'm watching uh, a chef's table last night and and one of these chefs this guy was worked in like a three michelin star restaurant right and he's dissatisfied with his life but he, he finds out there's this this place where this guy just cooks over fire goes there and eats and then he says like hey i want a job here and he's like well what do you you know and he's like you know i work at these three michelin star places whatever da, da, da. the guy's like i don't really fucking care fine you know making nothing but like this guy just went ended up staying there for five years just because he was so impressed with what this other guy was doing and he wanted to learn from him now this guy's at the top of his game already right but i said to my wife i was like you know I think this is interesting because this mimics the way I've, I've kind of gone after my life instead of like just sitting down with a book or whatever. I'm like, I'm going to find whoever the best is at what they do. And I'm just going to fucking bug the shit out of them until yeah. they, you know, hang out with me and I'm going to learn a lot. And I think that's the same thing. I think so many people don't see the value of like eating shit and going and interning and, and the, the amount you're going to learn in that process and just the, you know, the social skills required to nut up and do that it's just going to put you so much further ahead well, we travel yeah. so i met luke because anthony and i basically the same thing i was just like i knew pat somewhat um but i was like we're, i'm just gonna show up the hype like well, i kind of talked to some of them like how does this work but basically like i walked in there and it was like a lion's den <laughs> so it's interesting and, and then you, you were like yeah i just showed up and asked for a job and at that point in time that was like two or three years ago i was like damn this dude's crazy because like you walk in they're like essentially they're like yeah you can't talk shit unless you come lift with us and like it was like dead serious like no one would talk to us maybe just not me they talked to anthony but like we had to literally lift before they would talk shit to us <laughs> and then and then we found out at lunch so like they're like yo like we we had a lifting session i don't know like I, I'll, I'll talk shit so i don't really care where we're in so i, I kind of got along somewhat but it was like certain people didn't talk to me like Vinny, until whatever but we went to lunch and then essentially with the lunch and i was like hey, yeah that was cool they're like yeah if we didn't like you you wouldn't be invited to lunch fyi or maybe it was you yeah. you already said that and i was like oh they're like yeah that's how we weed out people because this this happens all the time like, oh i didn't know that like i just want to fucking 
yeah. I, I wanted to learn from everyone. I didn't learn from anyone. I just learned that Pat's a fucking psychopath. And everyone's <laughs> the reason why everyone's gotten better there is because of essentially the environment and just lifting and doing shit. It's not necessarily about the Springfield College knowledge. Like that helps. But being around those people is probably what elevated everyone, is from what, what I gather. Right. Anyways. Yeah. You know, Jeff, I'm happy you said something about social skills. <laughs> Because it is freaking impressive, the lack of them in culture today. Like, oh, yeah. you talk, you talk to the people that like are like deep in like the PT realm or like deep down like the PR rabbit hole, whatever <laughs> rabbit hole they're down. <laughs> and it's like talking to like like for lack of a better word, like somebody that's autistic, man. It's like it's so painful, right? And I'm willing to bet that if you look at any one of our past histories, we probably went to bars. We probably got denied. We probably got blacked out drunk. We probably like fucked around, you know, like I'd be willing to bet the fucking house that those skills were, were harvested in bars in in, you know, parties and, and just like, you know, it's like well, and team sports and team, sports. and team sports, you know, because right. a lot of these PRI PT guys, like they, they say they lift, but like they've never played well, any sports. Or done actually, anything. It's like, well, yeah. That's actually a big, like, I can almost, not everyone, but generally social skills and how big you are <laughs> go <laughs> hand in hand and how smart you are. Like, it, it's very, not very rare, but it's kind of cool to find smart people that are big with social skills, like, right. fucking for real. Like, that's pretty much all the people right. who podcast at this point. Not everyone. You don't have to be big. But I think that there is that. Like you talk about PRI just because of the, the group we hang around with. Like how many people do you kind of see on Instagram that you don't interact with much? And you're like, damn, dude, like you need to go blackout drunk one day and learn. Yeah, something. dude, it's, it, that's real, bro. Like and it's not even mean, it's just like it was sports. Hmm? Right. Going back to team sports and like, again, social skills and, and just like perseverance, like the amount of guys that like – I basically like got my bell rung every day in practice. And like, I still went and hung out with the, those people. Now like lateralize that skill to like yeah. a bar, talking to a girl, you get turned down, but you just keep trying. Cause like, fuck, what else do you know? You don't know anything else. You just got knocked out in practice and you like went and dapped your boy up after. And then like lateralize that to life. And it's like, if you want a miserable time in life, when not, when life, when life knocks you down, just stay down. You're going to suffer. It's going to suck. You know? But like, if you just keep getting up and going, like, that's kind of show. When you say this generation, I don't even know. Like, I think that there's a lot of that. I, I think the reason why this is like a, I don't want to say a big issue, but why we're talking about it is because like we see it because of Instagram right. and Facebook. Like we, not, you know, the, the cream rises at the top. Well, back in the day when there's none of this information, you just saw the top and now we can see literally the whole, the whole bottom yeah. all the way up. And it's like, you start to like think about these things like, damn, I'm grateful I did these things. Even though like at the time, like, like you said, blackout drunk and you see the bars. And I, was, I can literally like on my, like, I know those moments on my head exactly when I got a little bit better. Right. <laughs> right. I literally. learned something. Bro. Yeah. Um, fuck, where were we going with it before that? I don't know. We, t we were talking about, um, I don't even know. Fuck. So you're, kind of your, your, so you're basically you got, yeah, you, you got brought into the hype and, um, right. Like, so how have things progressed since you've been there? Because, you know, I was really impressed when I first met you. I was like, you know, you th that was when you, like, posted on Instagram. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I know this dude is fucking young. Like, young, young. And super yeah. smart. But, but like, when I met you, I was like, all right, but he comes off as a bro. Which is, to me, not, that's not an insult. <laughs> like, that's no, actually, right. like, that's, that's a good thing in this industry. Same thing. You talk like, about social You're smart and, and a bro. Like, that's cool. You, like, you've got the opportunity. We had the same, successful. we had the same interaction, essentially. Like, I was like, this dude's, like, hilarious. Because, again, you, we had a connection because you, you, you train hockey guys at some point. I can't remember. Right. You, you knew hockey guys or lacrosse guys. Anyways, long story short is they're very Canadian-esque. And the very yeah, the other jokes, but I remember I was talking at one point and just saying, like, man, this is so cool that you're here. Like, I, I get paid to be a trainer, or you get paid to be a trainer, except for you're around these people. But you had your little notebook, and you were like, basically, we went to Pat's live event thing, and you were just like hanging out, chilling, like it was just a regular day. I'm like, dude, this is like we get to learn. And you're like, yeah, and you had your like notebook full of all the shit. And I was like, fuck, yeah, I don't know, yeah, it, it, was, it's, it, was just, um... it was just cool. 
Yeah, so, Jeb, when I met you, I was probably, like, 23. Yeah. That was so, lot. essentially what happened, how I got into pro sports was I showed up at Hype, and I was just getting, like, I call them good reps. You know, like, you kind of have this audit system of, of uh, other professionals, and, like, if you do bullshit, like, they'll call you out on it. You know, it's like, hey, why the fuck are you doing burpees? Like, what's the point? You know, like, like people will question your exercise selection. They'll question all the shit. And, like, the cool thing about Hype is it's a bunch of individual people, right? So it's, like, there's no – there's a, it's not that there's incentive to shit talk, but there's no disincentive, yeah. right? There's no negative repercussions. For me, like, confronting Dean and being, like, hey, what the fuck was up with that? You, you know, my it's business. Like, it's, a very help, it's a very healthy environment, and it's very objective. It's very, like – it's very, like, hey, Dean, didn't like what you did. What's up? Yeah, but you're no, in New York right. too. You should mention that because I will actually. So since I'm around people that aren't like me, this this podcast, you guys are very abrasive, anyways. So when you say that, like some people, like from my friends, are like, dude, like you said it how? But like that's kind of normal talk, but it's it's also yeah, like confrontational a little bit. Right, right. Which is good. Which get a good way. You guys yeah. all mean well. Right, right. And I think, I think audits in general are like the healthiest thing you can do for yourself. It's like question, not question to doubt, but question like why you're doing everything. Like, like kill your uh, sacred cows. You know, it's like you have these pre pre existing beliefs and it's like, everybody's just going to shit on you. Like I put on wrist wraps one day for like a heavy bench and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. This is all I know. And it's like that day I never used wrist wraps again. It, it's just shit like that. And it's like, that sort of like vetting system, a lot of people I don't think can handle. No. And I think, I think if you live in that long enough, you just become like hypercritical of everything. And, but in a very like analytical sense, and like, you just, you titrate everything. And like the, the pure shit comes to the bottom or to the top, you know? Well, I think the important thing is too, is you'll, you're going to like shit on things and then you're going to, uh, continue that process and in a couple of years you might turn around and be like wow I shit on this thing but I was fucking wrong like here's why right. and, and I think that's the biggest thing and, and Dean and I talk about this a lot but um, you know one of Pat's big influences in in my life has I mean it's it's because of exercise science and things like that but it, that's not really the thing the thing is is that I had a certain belief structure and a lot of the shit he started bringing up turned that on its ear and right. for me to be able to take my entire belief structure in, in, in strength and conditioning and, and reevaluate it meant everything else was now on the table. And I think that is such an important um, aspect of life in general. And 99% of the people have no capability or willingness to do that. Right, right. Because to do that would be... I think it's a healthy practice. Well, to do What's it up? would be to change. To do that would be to change, essentially. And it's it's just like it, it's mm -hmm. tough when things are working so well. But it's like, uh, at least with Pat stuff or like bands or any of like our mentors, it's like it's too obvious not to ignore. <laughs> like, it's like right, it's right. Um, and yeah. when we've gone full circle, like, and we we make fun of PRI now and whatever. I don't really give a shit. But it's it's one of those right. things where like I'm even reevaluating the stuff I'm learning, and 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 it's just kind of constantly changing. And it seems like that. Um, we're at a cool spot now where like there's all these acronyms which is awesome there's lots of information but there's lots of like changes in how we're changing the normal practice and those practices are rechanging and now we're kind of in this um, discovery zone I want to call it which is cool but it's it's weird because now we're having the same problems that we were bitching about when all this stuff was coming in where it's like PRI mm -hmm. and all this stuff says all this stuff sucks mm -hmm. now there's a new system we're like yeah. yeah well all your stuff sucks and but it, right, it's, right. it's for better it's 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 for the best i guess we're constantly right moving. but yeah, yeah it's a good slow moving i think push yeah. it forward like no matter yeah. where we kind of are on that circle it's always forward you know and it's like i think as long as you maintain that you're in a good spot well it takes good people too. but um i even have one instance last night where uh you guys know matt Domi. anyways he's on next week 
but I was like talking to him like how do you train like what do you go to exercises for like swing phase something I don't know I was just like trying he was like dude I'm not fucking telling you like think about the movement and do it I'm like thanks dude that's what I need to hear <laughs> but I was like truthfully I just wanted an easy answer he's like yeah I'm not telling you fuck but it's like those types of people right. it's like it, it is good to have that because I know that I shouldn't just like do the easy way all the time sometimes it's nice but not every time and right. I'm sure they did that to you at Hype. They're like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, go down. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, especially coming out of Springfield, right? Because you have all this knowledge. You have all this education. You're reading, you're reading, you're reading. You're like, I know it. I've got it. And they're going to go, <laughs> you don't know shit, kid. Basically, they're yeah. Twice as hard on you because they expect more of you, too, which is great. Yeah, it just, it literally just, just like, builds you up even, even faster. Um. Going back to what you were saying about character, or um, you said something. And I said it's just like a character flaw. It was about kids not going into like. Oh yeah, yeah. It was like, like, it was like that idea of you going to hype, risks. basically like basic work over okay. free and like nutting up and going there and just like you had a plan but you didn't, but you were willing to like, you were willing to do something about it and not just worry about how much money you're gonna make or what looked fancy. <laughs> I think that's so a character issue. And now I learned a lot about character from a couple coaches up in Springfield. Yeah. And I think character and culture are pretty much the same thing. So if you have enough people, they're going to wake up every day, not be a pussy, get dressed up, go train till your hands bleed. And like you sweat acid until, you know, you, they eat right. They do, they do all the small things, you know, they find something that's bigger than themselves. They pour everything into it. They, they just check all these boxes, right? They come home, they cook, you know, they, they like, they just do everything. They get, they take the brunt of it, right? If you have enough of those people together, that's culture. Yeah. So like culture is an aggregate of character. So it's like, if you take the phrase and like, um, like motion, motion like attracts motion, right? Motion, it will insinuate more motion. So it's like, if, you are, if you're starting to build a place of good character and like people that just do right, do the right thing all the time and like kind of keep pushing the needle forward, that's just going to attract more of that same thing. And it's like now you're putting a fine mesh sieve in front of it and you're filtering out all the bullshit. Yeah. And it's like people see that sieve and they're like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I can do it. Well, it's because you're just, you're just not built of like the right stuff. You just don't got it. For, like for that's the character culture. thing. Like it. Like, like, you don't got it. And it's like, that it is character, in my opinion. And it's like, like, you're not going to get far if you do wrong by everybody. You're not going to get far if you, if like, you don't take advice and, and like, use it. If you're not going to get far, you know, like, it, it's just like, if you're not, if you don't have the right, like, like I don't know where it comes from. But it's, it's 100% character. And it's like, are you will so like you have character and then you have like what 13 character traits that go underneath it and i think if you have if you care right i'm kind of bouncing around here i have like some things written down on a sheet and i'm kind of using it as a cheat sheet but Man, you you character, cheat sheet? no you got you can take that cheat sheet way <laughs> we chill 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 chill, chill. <laughs> yeah. but if you have if you have character kind of this this good character right then everything else falls in. Because if you have character, then you care. And if you care, you're responsible. And if you're responsible, you're reliable. And if you're reliable, you, you know, it's just like everything yeah. just flows underneath. And it's like, if you don't, it, it's like a negative feedback loop. As long as, as soon as one of those things pops and like you don't got it, then it just rises to the top and then you just get exploited. And it's like, hey, you fucked up here, here, and here. And it's like, you can't recover from it. Well, that's where, like, even if you look, but but that's why, like, you look at, like, and we, luckily, you're from a good culture, so it's, like, you wouldn't even get some of the opportunities if you, like, at some point, it's, like, kind of like Springfield, it's, like, I didn't know, but, like, there's a lot of people who know that's Springfield, because, essentially, they have a filtering system, and if you were in that system, you made it, you checked off all those fucking boxes, same thing with hype, like, I walked into hype, and it's just, like, you can't be there, or at least you can't lift with the lifting crew, if you don't hit these things, it's like West Side. That's why those things mean right. something. Because someone at some point set up the principles, and there's enough people that are like, "Yeah, that's the fucking top. That's where I need to be." At anyone in there, essentially, 
made it just from simple, just like I played college football. You play college football. If you play college football and you started and you did this, you basically, you, you nutted up, you did all these things because you can't do it any other way outside of a few outliers. And the outliers, they were going to be good at anything anyway. So it didn't really matter. Right. Um, Jeb, yeah. I don't know. Jeb's just crazy. So Jeb's bald, has neck, has tattoos and shit. Like, you filter system. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's value, you know. It's it's values, and the thing is, is that our values are going to get be different, and yeah. we're going to, you know, that sieve is going to exist in different platforms for different people. Um, and and that said, you know, we, we can't equate character with success because you can be a real piece of shit and be very right. successful. In fact, you can po- potentially be the most successful by being the biggest piece of shit. But what is that? That's going to be monetary success. That's not plus, going to be plus everyone like, else. emotional. It's very simple. That motion bullshit. All the people that are full of shit are going to be in that network. And we see it in the fitness industry, yeah. all these like fucking dudes and the six figure things. And they're kind of a little bit big and stuff. If they walked into like, we'll just use hype because you're here. But they walked in hype. They get laughed at. They'd be like, yeah, you six figure thing. Like, can you yeah, bench? You're a fucking clown. To failure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like do you, nobody gives a shit about there. that stuff. Like, in, exactly. I, guess, I guess, like, that stuff, I guess the reason why it means lots because we're meatheads, but I think that we believe our filtering system is better. It's just, like, if I see someone right. on the street, I know, and it, it, that's why being big is helpful or having muscles or whatever. It's, like, or seeing a dude in the gym deadlift 600 pounds. It's, like, you know he couldn't – you can't just get that. Like, there's very Yeah, few you can't buy that. Yeah. Like, there's that's a few what people I love. that can. There's a few people that can, but, like, and, again, and that person's not genetic. in my gym. Yeah, and there's some genetic anomalies, but like for the most part, if you see someone who's big and who's lean and who moves well, or who's on the they're, floor, after- they're checking off all those boxes. Yeah. Like, yeah, they right. could be a piece of shit, but you know that they work hard. You know they're consistent. You know that they value something. You know whether it's the same things as I do doesn't matter because you can't, you can't, without valuing something, you can't get up every day and go into the gym i mean i don't feel like training today but i'm going to go do it and it's gonna suck and i hate it but but that's what we do it's the same thing with fighting though like you have mma and all this shit but like one thing is like there's like people talk shit and they have their camps or whatever but if someone doesn't tap and they're fucking out like that dude gets respect even though he lost it's like that dude ain't tapping and if he does tap he gets respect like that's the thing is like you're on like i told my wife i sat after practice down here for a half an hour with these guys and just talked because it's like you, you have an instantaneous rapport with someone who's willing to put their life in your hands and vice versa. Like you're trusting somebody because at any point they could kill you if they held on to that choke too long. And like that, you know, that builds a rapport that goes so much deeper than any conversation about anything instantly. And I think lifting can be the same way. Like when you go in the gym and you like, and you're deadlifting, and you guys put it on the line and you see someone like rep out that last rep or, or, or push themselves to absolute failure. Like you're like, I got fucking respect for that dude because he knows how to go into that dark place. And not many people do. Right. Until I, I got actually perfect. I got a perfect one for this. <laughs> Fuck. I don't even, how do we share things before? You just do the share, share your screen. Oh yeah. And then I have to do my uh, fucking phone. God damn it. This is why like we up. need to like do things in advance. But anyway, watch this sleuth. <laughs> I don't know. I'm laughing already, but of course it's gonna probably oh shit. Tap mirror. What are you seeing right now? Black screen that says Dean has started screen yeah, sharing. Yeah, well yeah, I can edit this stuff out. <laughs> <You see this>? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this one's actually pretty funny because it's actually kind of the same thing. It's like lifters in the 80s or 70s and 80s. I just, it's this, I just, what are these like the Shiba Inus, but they have that stupid fucking look on their face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that pretentious, but it's like, oh God, can I, can I get that thing away? But yeah, I just worked for six hours. Now it's time for my sixth steak. And then we have like lifters today. I fat and I'm an ectomorph. But like, this is like a total like allegory for like the fucking people in the gym right now. It's like, they don't, like, that's why I respect the people from Hype, at least, in, in terms of, or, like, because they don't deal with this bullshit. Like, if someone said that, they would probably laugh them off, out of the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's like someone's just going to sit there and argue about volume versus, 
you know, intensity and you're 140 pounds. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Just go lift. Like, like when you see, you when, Luke, when you, you don't see have this, a right to talk about this, Luke, when you see this, uh, you were in the seventies and eighties and neither was I, what's, what's your current version of the fucking, the two dogs. I have a few more that are the same. It's hilarious. Like you, so just, you just have this right? picture in your mind on the, who the fuck this person is. So we would <laughs> So so the dog on the right is all the uh, like the HRV type people. <laughs> the oh I can't train today because I got like a sleep score of forty two. It's like man a whoop band. Yeah, and it's like man in college like guys got blacked out drunk the day before a game, and it's like in pro sports like the amount of like drug abuse and alcohol abuse that exists is, is insane, and it's like. You're literally just being a bitch. It's like, like, you can still drag your ass out of bed, show up, and, like, at least fucking try, you know? Right. And the guy on the left, the guy on the left, like, um, I just worked out for six hours. It kind of looks like you, that's, to be honest, like, with the stringer. That, like, you, you don't have that big of arms, but, like, that's kind of, this is totally right. Mine are much bigger. for you. No, the guy on the left is just like, uh, that's the West Side Boys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they, actually, like, they'd make fun of the kid on the right, too. This, Jeb, this is like right up your alley because this is, this is your time. But is this correct? Well, I, first of all, you forget, I didn't really start getting into lifting until I was 33. So that was the 2000-somethings. But uh, going to the gyms in the 80s, like, I don't know, more 90s because I was, I was at least playing football in the 90s and seeing stuff. But like I don't know, we first of all there was like you had to, you read like a bodybuilding magazine like there was no internet, so you wouldn't even know like what an ectomorph was. It was just like there's a fat guy that lifts a lot of weight and there's a skinny guy who you know runs a lot. Like I don't know, like so you just assume like I don't know, like skinny guys run and fat guys lift. I don't. But like back then it was just there was you just guessed. Like most people just went in and and just like okay I'm gonna go bench for an hour. And then go home unless you had, a, you know, Dorian Yates's blood and guts video, and then you could figure something out. Well, I think basically this meme is making fun of information because I don't even I, like I know what ectomorph is. That's like the the fat, like they're kind of fat, thick bone. They're like they're like Cartman. I'm big, I'm big boned. Um, it's those people, right? I don't know. It just like seems like information is an excuse essentially. Like HRV is the same thing. Like I use HRV, but it's just like I get it. Like but your score of whatever, your red score doesn't indicate anything, but it's like they use that as an excuse. So like, this is like a metaphor for the excuse you use because of the thing you read about. Cause like you said, no one knew to ectomorph was. I, I still theoretically have no idea what the fuck does that have to do with anything. That was actually a behavioral psychologist that came up with it as a way to, to delineate people's worse. personalities. Yeah, it's not even about fitness, and it's 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 also fake. The whole thing, it's not a real thing. Yeah. What is it? What would that? How would that be helpful for psychology? To like be like, oh, you're not fat. You're well, not fat. it was it was. I believe it was actually like uh, a, a kind of uh, like white supremacist type thing. Like he was like using it as a uh, a racial like uh, eugenics type uh, ideology. Like the whole thing was really fucked up. Wow, I can see it being like. Uh an identity thing somebody being like oh i belong to the mesomorphs i belong to the ectomorphs you know well, that, like, that's what happened that. like, all, all the yeah. fitness people were like yo i'm a mesomorph like all the dudes that were mesomorphs or like mesomorphs they're just like yeah, yeah. you're fucking like, you're not here yeah. you suck. <laughs> it's like i have abs and i lift i'm a mesomorph dude people that don't gain weight are so it's it's crazy to me it, it, at springfield i had a buddy rocco that literally would so we had we had a system where you would eat you'd swipe a card and you'd be able to sit in the in the dining hall basically all day he'd sit there for three hours eat so much chicken and rice and throw up a couple of times and then like keep eating that'll do it you that was just like his hobby he's like yeah i want to gain weight and it's like motherfuckers don't do that i mean i was so i got married at, at 28 years old i was 143 pounds started lifting around when I was like 33 and I was probably 150 pounds. And like that first year I was like, all right, I need to gain some weight. So every day for lunch, I would either, I would usually get a pound of meatballs like from the, uh, the Italian place. 
And then I would get a whole roasted chicken and I kept a jar of mayonnaise at the fridge at work and I would just dip my chicken in mayonnaise and eat the whole thing and then eat the pound of meatballs like a couple hours later. And that was my lunch every day. And I mean, I put on like 25 pounds that year. Yeah, man. And like, that makes sense. All right, I didn't know, like, I wasn't here? like sitting there going like, oh, well, I need actually 700 grams of carbs and 24 grams. I was like, I'm going to eat as much as possible. This is a good segue because this is about potheads. I, this has nothing to do with, this is just, this is just funny because it just kind of shows why it's funny, but it's like potheads in the nuts. It's just golden eye. So <laughs> like shitty weed and then potheads dude, now. We talk about this all the time. Cause like my wife and I talk about, it. she went to art school down in, in uh, Savannah. I went to music school in Nashville. So, you know, clearly we were, but like you, there used to be like we would call it like it was we'd be like oh the city's dry there would just be you couldn't get weed there was no weed in the city and when you did get weed it was like this bag of brown like crispy stuff with like stems and seeds yeah, I mean, well yeah they had that too <laughs> that was an East Coast thing but no it was just crumbled like it looked like oregano unless you had friends that like followed the Grateful Dead and they would have like the goods, but everything that was good was called like kind bud. You just called it kind bud. And it was like, or like Northern lights. It was like three strains that were good, but like those, all, and it was so expensive. You never bought it, but like, you know, you buy an eighth of weed for like whatever, 20 bucks. This is, see, this is why, that's why it's hilarious. Cause like you would have actually seen this and like, I'll, I won't oh. comment on my teenage years cause it wasn't legal back then, but it was definitely video games and this but it's hilarious because like it's the same thing you know who this fucking guy is it's like the dude with the hat fucking skinny what strain is this i only smoke t high thc indica donk hybrids hybrids i need to look up the turpentine profile on leafly like dude it's just like you're looking for an excuse <laughs> that's all i see yeah. it's, it's, like, it's so up. straight up real though this i mean one, this one's a good one <laughs> so they're that oh set boy up. <laughs> This one doesn't really matter. Basically, this one is like the same one, except for now he's naked. And he's like, I listen to basically gangster rap. I, I know every line in Predator. I eat chicken, rice, and broccoli. You could add till you puke. Goes to the gym to lift weights, just lift weights, and eat steak and bacon. And then now it's like everything on the, the lifter <laughs> is a vegan. Oh they try internet fasting. They <laughs> just eat chia seeds and organic vegan hemp protein for breakfast. This is so funny. This is just so. It's sick. a joke, yeah. <laughs> but like, this is so. This would be like we didn't have these people when I left it, Luke. But now you, you, you would easily be able to know. Like, I didn't. I just learned who Little Uzi was. But this is like these are the shitty lifters in your generation. This is this whole fucking side. Right. We didn't right. Know any of that stuff. So I'm just, sorry about that. I this could be you. This could be. This could have been you had you went to um not springfield every to harvard right yeah it's crazy to think about but like but like i mean like honestly like like you know we were talking to jordan shallow though and like he's like saying he's like you know it's a fucking weird time like as a business owner part of business is me showing up with a 4k camera and uh like guy to shoot this thing and um you know that's part of a business strategy and it's like that's a weird weird work like i can't even like Ryan will be, you know, ask me to take videos for him of my workout stuff. And I'm like, Ugh, I don't feel like setting my camera up. Just a different world now. And that's why it's kind of like, not that we need Luke to come on here and talk about it, but it's kind of interesting because like things have changed and you can be that version of the fucking dog or you can be the, the one with the hat turned sideways, making up excuses. And right. they, they look different in different generations, but it is, I know my picture of that fucking person. Like on all of them, right. right? On on the topic of drugs, on the topic of lifting, on the topic of work. It's like I have this avatar in my head, and they most of them look actually the same. <laughs> the, the same dog, yeah, the yeah. same. <laughs> it's like the, crazy. Like it's so. Like let's kind of let's kind of spin off that, Lucas, and, and talk about like, um, you know, as a younger guy in this this industry, um, I I think that you know the the coronavirus, COVID, whatever, you know dropped a bomb on the industry obviously but i think uh for guys your age probably you know just kind of getting their taste of the industry um to see something that feels this unstable 
I'm guessing most of them are going to go, you know, try and find a regular job. What is it for you that helps you to kind of be like, all right, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I see a path forward. Maybe it means altering some things, but like, how, what is, what does your future look like in your mind? So I'm, I'm, I'm in a bit of a good situation. Um, we'll backtrack a little bit. So Fergus Connolly has a quote that's like, in all uncertainty and all, in all chaos, there's always winners and losers, right? So no matter what happens, there's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser pretty much. Yeah. I so can. all you really have to do is just find a way to win. And it's like, so now you kind of have this goal. It's like, okay, well, you want to win, right? And like, what are the constituent parts of that? And it's like, well, winners show up. Winners work hard. Winners, like, just keep chipping away. And like, they, they love the process and like, they keep, they literally just like, they love every aspect of it. So it's like, there's some days where I go to bed and it's like, I have a pedometer on my wrist and it shows like 28,000, 30,000 steps. And she's like, you're nuts. And I'm like, no, I'm just like doing it. You know, like, this is just like what, what I came to New York to do. And like, I'm not going to like, yeah. like, especially in this type of uncertainty, like you take like, lower paying sessions, you take all these different things, right? So like try to piece it together. And then in a long term, like you change your clientele base and then like you progress and like, it's like anything else, you just get better and better. But like you start in the shit. Yeah. Right. Like it, it, It's going to be a shitty start no matter what you do. You know, like when I got down to Florida, my first few weeks, I had like ulcers in my mouth. I was so nervous all the time. I had no idea what I was like. Not that I had no idea what I was doing. I was good at the coaching part. Well, like, it was one of the first times I ever had to dress up for a job, yeah. you know? So, like, I was like, fuck, am I doing this right? Like, there's so much uncertainty even there. And, like, that's, like, a contracted job, you know? And, but, you know, you keep showing up and, like, you just keep chipping away. And I think over time, the people who aren't willing to provide that consistency with everything they do are the ones that fall off. And, again, I think that goes back to the character thing we were talking about before. And it's like, are you going to show up? Like, it's, it's like jujitsu. Like, how do you want to progress in jujitsu? Like, you have to show up every single day. You literally have to practice the moves. You have to, like, be willing to get choked out and suffer. And then, like, if you find a tribe that's willing to suffer just as much as you, like, I'm sure those kick-ass wrestlers that you roll with from D1 are making you better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you, you find a support system that's just going to keep backing you and being like, hey, don't quit now, pussy. Come on, we, we got to keep going. You know, it's like, you don't really have a chance to lose. Like, if you do those things, if you do those things. I think failure, the tough part is finding like, other people like you. Like, I don't know, like, maybe I'm just, but like, I had to go, I guess, I guess that's a character trait of like searching for that. But I think like, that's why it's interesting. Cause how much, how much has your tribe helped you out in this situation? Like essentially being isolated, like, has that been a thing? I've, I've been blessed that I have a really good support system between yeah. my parents, my girlfriend, between um, the guys at Hype, even the people I worked with in Florida, like I was able to go with them with anything. And so like that I'm blessed with and like I'm, I'm grateful for it every day, you know, like, and so I try to like give back to them too. But if, if you think like, say you have to be willing to do it, you know, and it's like, <laughs> I, it's like it's it's it. crazy how simple it is but like i live so imagine my th like right here at my thumb knuckle is new york city i live out here yeah. my hometown's out here on long island i would drive in every day man it was it was a hour and a half two hour commute man so you see so basically what you're saying like, is you're you haven't changed anything because it's it's just it's just harder but you were already you already co-signed it on it being hard, where I think most people want right. easy from the beginning. You already accepted the fact it's hard. Now it's just a little bit harder, which isn't really exactly it's not amazing, yeah. exactly. which is weird. Like, <laughs> like it's, it is kind of weird, dude. Like, like, you just, like to say all those things, like you said to me, I'm in the same way. And like we coach nutrition clients, it's like to to actually explain that to someone and get them to identify and internalize that. That's the hard part <laughs> because it is simple. Right, right. Just showing up, but like that's the hard part too which is like, and you want to believe everyone wants to be there. Like I, I look at the dog and the fucking THC dude that doesn't want to play goal nine, just like fucking making excuses. I still don't believe they want to be that piece of shit because they know, they know they're that right. fucking Shiba Inu. 
for sure. Are you are you guys are you guys familiar with the learned helplessness learned helplessness yeah. model in dogs? Yeah. No, oh, in dogs, yeah. yeah, for sure. Like these, yeah. I think that's so to the point. Explain it. It's actually, like, actually, so, this is actually good. You actually went so deep that we're actually explaining this meme. This is perfect. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Tell, tell, learn helplessness because you explain things in an orderly fashion. It's nice. So you have kind of two two dogs, right? You have the stray mangy mutt that's been like fighting every single day for its like life. That's like it eats fucking rats. It eats the garbage out of your garbage can. It. It, you know, it's just a mean fucking thing. It's just a mean motherfucker. And then you have like this well-groomed, well-manicured indoor dog that only knows its apartment building and it's super pampered. It has its weekly bath and, you know, it's never had to really deal with shit. It's never had to kill anything. It's never had to like go out on its own and like forge for itself. If those two dogs were locked in a cage together, who are you going to put your money on, Dean? The, the big sheep that you knew. The, the, the big one. The fucking mangy. Yeah. The, the, the thing that's literally been fighting every single day. So it's like, just learn to embrace the fight, man. Like, learn to embrace that, like, street life. Learn to embrace, like, all of the shitty things. And then, like, life just gets easier. Because, like, that's the process. Like, yeah. I, I like, think, too, the advantage you have, and I, I, people don't necessarily understand it. Like, I work with nutrition clients that will say, like, Oh, I'm so busy. And I'm like, I'm going to try to be compassionate here, but you're not going to get it from me because I live in fucking New York. Like right. you want to talk about mangy dogs. Everyone's a fucking mangy dog, except they're trying to be the top dog too. So, if right. you, you know, that's that whole joke. If you can make it here, you can make it. It's true because you can't, you can't fuck around in New York and expect anyone to care. Like you're going right. to have to, you have to hustle. You have to work 14 hour because you're working 14 hour days and you start bragging about it and everyone else is like, so everyone fucking works 14 hour That's, days. It's great. This is, yeah. actually it's not impressive. this is like going full circle to where you're talking about culture and personality. It's like, I would totally agree. Like I didn't, I was in New York briefly for like a week and a half and like, it's fucking crazy. It was just like, there was this, like the, the pipe bomb scare at CNN. And anyways, long story short, it's totally crazy to me not crazy in New York. They're like, we can't get to work. Like we have to go around another block and they're all fucking pissed. And I'm like, I'm, should I be scared? And they're like, they're all just made you dogs. It's like, listen, don't care about what's going on. Gotta go to work. <laughs> yeah, just, like, they're like, they're like, yeah, whatever. Just don't get in my fucking way, man. Like, actually like, though, and like they don't stop for anyone. Like there's crosswalks. We're like waiting for the crosswalk. Fucking buddy just walks out. The cars all stop and I'm like, yeah. wait. <laughs> Anyways, it's just like, it's read this culture. I don't see any overweight people in New York. I'm sure they're there. Um, but like, that was crazy to me because it is a culture shock. But I think that that is why there's so much money there too. That's why rent's so expensive. It's like, you guys all figure it out. Um, don't want well, to attra it attract people that want to do those things too. Yeah, right, right. Like, but it's a horrible place, you guys. <laughs> there's a bunch of mangy dogs like could you imagine like you're this like i'm sitting in the suburbs and i walk into like i'm like this helpless dog with like this great life and there's 10 there's like a million mangy dogs <laughs> fucking out. fucking hyenas like they, they this... got those tired eyes they're beady they're they're looking you down and they're just waiting for the weak spot they're just waiting for you to show your throat like, I don't even know, like, it sucks. It's just like, I want to be a little bit of that. I just don't want to be full on mangy. Like, it's, it's like, I want to be the dog that was mangy, but now it can eat and just got jacked. It's, like, I, I still want to, like, live in a mansion with my, like, indica hybrid thing. And my hat turned sideways, but I want to be looking like the other dog and be able to, like, take my hat off and then be, like, I want to do both. Because right, the other right. dog is not, it's not that bad. It's kind of nice to be the... The, the helplessness dog sometimes like, yeah you know what it's, leave me wash it's me. nice to be pampered yeah yeah right Where's that right. meme like we even did like switch it for a bit. <laughs> there needs to be like a subsection of that like but it's okay to enjoy this yeah. because it's right right you can definitely get too deep into it and and kind of burn yourself out you yeah. need to treat yourself. That's that's absolutely it, true. Is, it, before we even well, and you it. also have to per keep perspective because I know my problem with New York is that it nothing's ever enough. You know, it's like 
I'm a, like, I, I literally had this conversation with someone the other day. I was, I was like, you know, if I could just get my income up to like four or 500,000 a year, I think then I could really start to save well and do the, and I'm like, that thought process of yeah. I should be making a half a million dollars a year is the most batshit crazy thing that's ever gone through my head. And it was a completely serious thought. And then when I finally right. reflected on it, I was like, okay, maybe my priorities are getting a little fucked up. Like, cause you're surrounded by such wealth and such like well, drive that you start to think that's normal and it, it, it and it can warp you. So you got to be what careful. Point, and maybe this is good from your perspective before we wrap it up. At what point do you kind of get out of that circle? Cause it, it is sweet to be in that dog eat dog world. Like, we're at hype, we're doing this, but I even see a lot of you guys evolving. Like, so what, I guess where, how do you kind of get to that step? Cause at some point I believe you have to eat shit, but at some point there needs to be a change. Well, there doesn't need to be, but it's just like, there is an evolution of that. So like, what is, what has that been? And because even you've like, you left, like you went to pro sports and stuff. So I guess, where does that line kind of start and end for you? At least for someone that's coming up, because I do believe you got to do it for a bit. Right. So, I think a good, like not analogy, but a good lateralization here is like process goals and uh, outcome goals. So you have these goals, right? And outcome goals are kind of like this zero sum game. And it's like this, you just try to get there and by any means you get there. And then process goals are like, okay, well, what are the means to kind of get to that outcome? Right, so it's like you want to make sure that the process is healthy enough to support a good outcome that you want. Um, I think you make, you keep making adjustments. So this is where audits come in. You look at your day, you reflect every day, and you say, hey, is this what I really want to be doing? And it's like, well, how do you gauge that? So you ask the next question. It's like, if I died tomorrow, would I be satisfied? You know, and it's like, I think you keep making micro adjustments until you're kind of on that path. Yeah. And then the outcome goal doesn't really matter yeah. like there's a book that exists called like the score doesn't count or the score doesn't matter and it's like a big phrase is like hey the hay is in the barn like did you do all the work to set you up for the outcome and it's like you hustle and hustle and hustle and when you think you've had enough and like it's like boom or bust so it's like if you hustle and hustle and hustle and you're successful okay well now you leave the city and you kind of like live a little bit more of a lavish life or you hustle and hustle and hustle, you fail, and you move back in with mom and dad. You know, so those are kind of the two options. But nobody stays in New York to be like 80. You know, it's like you're here for a while because you're ambitious and you want. And then, and then you, you peace out to like a suburb, you know. And then you move in as Dean's neighbor and you take all his clients and you make him go move in with mom and dad. Well, that's why I went online. It doesn't matter now. I mean, right, I right. personally, there, there's parts of New York that I could stay forever because like – I think it'd be the greatest place to retire just to to be able to move around, but it's, you know, and who knows what things are going to look like with real estate after COVID, but like it's, it's the expense, it's the expense right. and, the, and, the, and now working from home, it's almost becoming prohibitive because like my wife and I both working from home in 500 square feet is a fucking craziness. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I like, yeah. I like, I like that. That was like, it wasn't, it's it's funny because it, it just shows like and this is actually kind of co- full circle we talk about pri and all these people these avatars of people who think too much like you think just enough but you also have a very structured way of looking at things without having to think too much because i know you think deeper than that but it still got you to the place where it's this fucking simple guys like uh, i still come yeah. back to that yeah. like i would have done that anyways but now i'm going to still do that because it's still relevant it's still the same fucking thing i'm just i have interest in things that are smarter but i still have to show off myself to do this still have to do this and at some point like yeah I, I i grew up or i got like you you went to pro sports got a girlfriend but you still have I, the same personality I came to the conclusion I valued the process yeah. more than getting blacked out drunk. Yeah. And that's a topic for another day, but like you took all, you take all the effort it takes to like get really drunk every day and then like still show up and like try to do that. And you just like apply it to like critical analysis and like thinking about life and stuff. And it's like, it swings you the other way pretty quick. Well, I think that's also one of the kind of advantages of being around Pat is like the whole rethinking the big patterns thing is all about categorical thinking. And yeah. like we can apply that to a bunch of other stuff. Now, that doesn't mean everything's static and it's always going to stay there. But if we have a, a, a set of 
principal categories to guide us, it makes things a lot easier. It's, you can check those boxes, like you said, and that's process, right? Checking boxes every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sweet, buddy. We're, we're, well, I know where to find you. This is actually, let's see how much you prepped for this in your fucking little notebook. Where, where do people find you? Where's the best place to consume Luke? And don't look down. You got to look at the camera and say it. So I used to be way more active on Instagram. I will probably, now that I'm not bound by contract, I will probably re, uh, re-pick up that, that uh, hop habit. It'll be Lucas underscore of underscore flock. I'm sure Dean will share my information in the show notes. Um, yep. Or if you want to send me a text, if you can get my number, shoot me a text. Oh, I'd love to talk say, to people. Is this like an Ethan thing where like the only place to find you is text and I'm not telling you his number? No. So social media. I'm like, although my account has like one post, I'm, I'm on it pretty frequently. I'm consuming information all the time. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody about anything. If there's a young strength coach listening to this and wants advice, I'll tell them not to take the CSCS. Um, th- we can chat about it whenever. Um, yeah. And, and, no, I re- yeah. Like, honestly, I do hope you get more active on social media because I do think you have a lot of really good things to uh, say. Um, even just from a, like a, a strict knowledge standpoint, like I know the things that you have shared and just hearing you talk and, and um, like, I was always super impressed. I'm like, fuck man. Like that's, you know, guys like you are kind of part of the reason I stopped training because I was like, I'm a great nutrition coach and I could literally, I would be happy to send any of my clients to you who's a younger guy who's hungry and, and driven and way smarter than me. And I'm like, go train with him. I'll handle your nutrition. Like that's, yeah. you know, and that's why I, and I appreciate guys like you and I want you to share more because uh, it's, it's valuable stuff and I want it out there. Right. right. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Nailed it. I'm going to, I'm going to. Thanks guys. That's right. I have rousted with an alligator. I don't tussle with a whale. I don't handcuff lightning, throw thunder in jail. You can't stop me. I'm going to win. It ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. I won't quit. I just keep getting stronger. 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 Stronger.